In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good morning, everyone. Under these unusual circumstances, we come to you by way of St. John's Church, but by way of the local cable access. And we do thank the folks at EBCAM for uh, allowing this opportunity uh, to bring you the Mass in this particular way in this time of social distancing. I'm very happy to be joined uh, this morning by Paul Hoffman and uh, Mackenzie, who will be leading us in song, uh, and all of you uh, joining us by way of uh, the various portals uh, on which you are viewing this. And so let us uh, begin our celebration by taking a moment of quiet and consolation, placing ourselves in the merciful heart of Christ and recognizing those times that we have failed to walk in God's way of love. Let's ask our Lord God for forgiveness, for we have a God who is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may, be, may hasten to the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's open up our hearts and minds now to hear God's word. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem for I've chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrifice, sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a handsome youth, a, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, it just, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they replied to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, is this your son who you say, you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, God, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. 
We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of it that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach him, teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a friend of mine from college who was born blind from birth, and it was, it's always an interesting encounter with him because people will come up to him and say, Dennis, how are you? It's so nice to meet you. To which he would respond, you know, the, the front doesn't work, but the sides work perfectly fine, so just lower your tone. And, you know, there's this misunderstanding about blindness, and there was a misunderstanding in Jesus' day about blindness, because of the fact that sin and sickness were so intrinsically linked that this man, born blind since birth, uh, born blind and been, having been blind since birth, is seen to be so totally steeped in sin that no one can help him. So all he can do is beg. That's the only recourse he has in his life is begging. Once he has left his parents, he's of age and he's left his parents' responsibility, all he can do is beg. That's all he was good for in the eyes of society because of his blindness. So now Jesus comes along the scene and he uh, cures this man of his blindness, but he not only restores him physically, but he restores him socially and spiritually as well. But the Pharisees are blind to this. They cannot see this because they do not acknowledge Jesus as Messiah. They cannot see Jesus as Lord. And so their blindness remains throughout this encounter of both Uh, them with Jesus and with the blind man. Uh, They fail to see that Jesus is master, is Lord of the Sabbath, and so uh, it doesn't matter to Jesus that he cures on a Sabbath, because to Jesus, healing has no uh, time, has no place, has no space, has no limits, really. It's unlimited because it comes from God. Healing comes from above. Healing comes from the eternal. And so, As a people of faith, we come to recognize that we are called to do the works of the Lord no matter what the day, the time, or the season, whether, as St. Paul reminds us, whether convenient or inconvenient. And this is, to say the least, a bit of an understatement, an an inconvenient time. Uh, It's a time of inconvenience for all, no matter what our state in life, because we're all affected by the coronavirus in some way. We may not be physically affected, but certainly with social distancing, we're affected in that way. And emotionally and spiritually, we can be affected as well. We can fall prey to the blindness, the darkness of this moment. And we can give in to that darkness and be steeped in us in like the Pharisees were. Or we can be people of the light. We we can be children of the light, as Jesus calls us to be, as St. Paul calls us to be in our second reading. He calls us to be children of the light. And the light that we bring into the world breaks through all darkness, pervades all darkness, because it is the light of the world that is Christ that we bring into the world. And as a people of faith, it is not us, but it is Christ working through us. But we can be those vessels, we can be those conduits through which Uh, Jesus works uh, in bringing light and life and love into the world, especially into the darkness of people's lives as we reach out to them, as we uh, offer ourselves in service to them by maybe shopping for them or uh, praying for them or 
uh, as you might have seen on my Facebook page and on our Facebook pages, the kindness rocks uh, of taking your taking a couple of rocks and to uh, pour out your worries into them, pour out your fears of loss, uh, the things lost in these days, in this time, in our lives, uh, and to bring them to the church, uh, bring them to the front of the church here uh, at the front or over at St. Anne's by the prayer garden, by the uh, outdoor station to the cross. And then to take that second rock uh, and to write a message of hope, a message of healing, a message of kindness, a message of love, uh, to write that message on that rock and to give it to a neighbor, uh, maybe one who is um, housebound in this time, who cannot get out because of social distancing and isolation, maybe to a first responder or to a medical professional or to a service worker, somebody who has to be out and about uh, and has to work in this environment, you know, to give it to them, to give them a sense of kindness, a sense of hope uh, in this time of challenge. Uh, and to not give in to the blindness, not give in to the darkness uh, that this time can bring. And so as a people of faith, let us continue to recognize the opportunities God gives to us to be children of the light and to bring Christ's light into the world, uh, to our brothers and sisters, to all whom we meet. And as we continue our journey in faith, we offer our profession of faith, for I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is our shepherd and our king who heals us of our spiritual blindness and leads us on the pilgrimage of faith. Let us ask God, our Father, for the grace to live the new life of faith in a world darkened by sin. For leaders of the church, that they may lead their people as true shepherds of the flock by proclaiming the true faith and continuing Christ's kingly role of humbly service to the church and the world, we pray to the Lord. For the civic authorities and leaders of a society like the blind man who washed his eyes in the pool of Siloam, that they may be open to the needs of society and meet them with Christian care, we pray to the Lord. For all here present, either remotely or approximately or distantly, that as the blind man we are not afraid before the Pharisees, may, who is not afraid before the Pharisees, that we may never be afraid to witness that Jesus is the light, we pray to the Lord. And for those intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for vocations, that you offer our prayer for vocations. Heavenly Father, bless your church from an abundance of holy and zealous priests, deacons, brothers, and sisters. Give those you have called to the marriage date and those you have chosen to live as single persons in the world the special graces that their lives require. Form us all in the likeness of your Son, so that in him, with him, and through him, we may love you more deeply and serve you more faithfully, always and everywhere. With Mary, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather all of our prayers and petitions offered under the mantle of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us now prepare our offertory, and pr uh, uh, let us prepare our gifts.
I pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith, and has brought those born to slavery, in slavery to ancient sin through waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the me history of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John Patrick, our Cardinal Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Evangelist, St. Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Once again, my thanks to Paul and to Mackenzie for uh, leading us in liturgical song. My thanks to the folks at EB Cam for. Uh, giving us the opportunity, giving us the wherewithal to broadcast this, and we'll be putting it out on our various social media platforms as well, on our Facebook pages, on our website. Uh, we'll send out by way of email if, uh, how we can. And um, we would encourage you to all to continue to join us in prayer during these challenging times, to share your, your kindness rocks, your peace rocks with uh, your neighbors, uh, and to bring them uh, to the church as well, bring one to the church as well 
to be in solidarity uh, with our brothers and sisters and to continue to monitor our pages to see the different endeavors that we have during this time of social isolation in which it doesn't have to be a time of spiritual isolation, certainly. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you always and in always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Have a great day, everyone.